Yo, Kepe Sky here. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm bringing you the unboxing and overview of the TCL 65R648 AK TV. Now, I purchased this myself, and while I don't plan on keeping this TV, as I have a very nice 100 inch projector screen, I do plan to get this bad boy calibrated and see what's new in this AK TV from TCL. I see some new faces in the audience, so if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. You won't regret it. TCL has taken the market by storm. You can expect a lot of incredible picture quality for not a lot of money in comparison to the big dogs in the market, which is really appealing for those looking for a true bang for their buck. I can already hear the comments now, there's no AK material, why are you buying things like this? <laughs> well, my friend, this offers more than just an 8K panel, but we'll get to that in the full review video coming early this week. My tester is a 65 inch model, but you can pick one of these up in a huge 75 inch version as well. We are jam packed with features in this TV, including Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, THX certified gaming for low input lag, works with Siri, Google Assistant, or Amazon Al uh, Allison. <laughs> we'll call it Allison. As you guessed it, this TV is 4K 120 ready with EARC and 8K upscaling capabilities as well. This panel is TCL's 8K Mini LED QLED Roku TV priced just under 2000 US dollars, which is incredible for an 8K 65 inch 4K 120 TV. Most high end 55 inch 4K OLEDs and QLEDs are priced around that 2K USD mark. So talk about a bang for your buck. Inside the box, you'll find a solid stand different from previous iterations of TCL's TV designed with a brush metal look, of course, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to assemble. You're also given a remote with batteries, a power cord, and some literature if you need it. The tough part about being a single YouTuber in a small apartment is moving these large boxes with just my set of hands, but despite its size, I was able to safely lift and maneuver it as needed. Like I said, I use a projector, but I found a way to sit my TV on something since I don't have a TV stand, so don't go at me too much in the comments. <laughs> but here's a closer look at the TV stand as well as the new look remote for the Roku TV. Solid feeling in the hand for sure, and I like the placement of all the buttons and hotkeys. Your volume and mute button reside on the right side of the remote where your index finger stays for all my right-handed people. Sorry lefties. Going through initial setup was pretty painless. What I found interesting was having to pair the remote to the TV. Typically the remote is program ready to go, but I assume it's because you can use this remote from the box, a rechargeable Roku remote with a headphone jack sold separately, or you can download an app on your iOS and Android devices and control your Roku devices right from your phone. That's pretty cool. Out of the box, the picture quality isn't half bad, but like most TVs out there, you'll want to make some key corrections. I found the TV to be extremely bright, so I knocked that down quite a bit, then made my way to the color temperature and added a little warmth to everything. Pigment seemed a little pale and my whites looked a little too blue, so changing the color temperature from cool to normal made this look a lot more natural and a little less harsh on the eyes. That's the only changes I've made to the picture setting thus far as I plan to sit down and truly calibrate it off camera before the review video. One of the unique features I haven't yet mentioned about this TV are the built-in speakers and subwoofer. This TV uses down-firing speakers but has dedicated tweeters and mid-range speakers and that big circular thing you guys saw on the back of the TV is a subwoofer which actually adds quite a bit of depth to the sound. While this TV doesn't quite compete with the likes of Sony, it still sounds great compared to most everything out there. Thank goodness TCL made a huge change to how you set up your picture settings. 
Before you had to make the same adjustments for every single input and every single video format. So that means you had to correct HDR settings, SDR settings and ETC on every single input you use. But now you can set it once and save it across multiple inputs. Thank goodness. I'll save my thoughts on this TV for the full review, but from the initial unboxing, the picture is amazing, even before any correction. I'm excited to sit down with this 8K TV and unlock its potential. Thank you.